Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to do quite a few things as an exercise. It will be a very good practice for a bunch of things. Your chord inversions, your study of beat divisions, usage of triplets, semiquavers, quavers, all in one. And also chords which are broken up. You could call them arpeggios or broken chords. And also... Block chords. How do you use block chords and arpeggios together? And I've put it together in a rather real world challenge that you might face on any instrument wherein you're playing two chords. Let's say uh, in this exercise, we are going to stick with B flat major, B flat D, F and D major. D, F sharp, A. Two nice chords which go pretty well together. But the challenge here would be if you play these chords as one, two, three. 4, 1, 2, 3. That's two bars of B flat. 2, 3, 4, 5, 2. That's two bars of D. So the journey between or during these two chords, B flat and D, is rather boring if you ask me because you're just, you know, pe people are just hearing the same block of three notes, B flat, D, F, in some inversion or the other. That's what we plan to do in this lesson. How to make the journey between chords or just one chord and during the same chord more interesting. And what we'll also do is isolate the study. What I mean by that is we will focus on one element at a time and we'll do this over a few lessons. So in this lecture, we are going to only focus on rhythm and the pattern of the chords. We are not going to look at changing the chords in any way. So it's still going to be B flat major. But what you watched in the intro video was some kind of arpeggiation and some kind of interest. So I'm going to teach you those things specifically. And it's primarily going to be rhythmic, wherein the chords would either be blo uh, blocked. Block means you play them together and arpeggiated, meaning you break them in certain groupings, which I'm going to teach you. Okay. My handwritten notes is there to help support the lesson. You can probably get yourself a copy on our Patreon. It's a PDF file ready for download. And you'll also get notation at uh, MIDI and backing tracks wherever applicable for a lot of our YouTube lessons, which we've done. Hundreds of them, actually. So do consider heading over to Patreon for just $5 a month as your subscription. And before we get started, it'll be great if you could consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. Let's get cracking. So the two chords, B flat major and D major. Let's first walk you through to the chords, the shapes, and more importantly, the inversions. We are going to need to use the inversions throughout the lesson. So B flat major, I'm playing it first off in its root position. B flat D F. You can go index middle pinky or else thumb index ring. If, or you can even do thumb middle pinky. See what suits you, I guess. And if ever you're using the thumb on any of these chords, which you will end up needing to, especially with the inversions, give your thumb a slightly curved po position. Don't play it straight. Otherwise, your elbow will have to come close to the body and it kind of puts some strain on the hand in general. So curve your thumb or else you can use your index finger. So B flat major this way. Then you can also play B flat major this way. That would be D, F, B flat. That's called as the first inversion. And then we have F, B flat, D. That's your second inversion. So root, first, second. And the left hand will just maintain a steady root. B flat, B flat octave. Now the other chord, D major. Let's walk you through that. D major, that's D, F sharp, A, or else F sharp, A, D, A, D, F sharp. Okay, so D, F sharp, A, F sharp, A, D, A, D, F sharp. These are all your inversions. So the job for us right now would be there are two bars of each chord. B flat played over one, two, three, four, second bar. And D major played for another two bars. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What do we do? So if you see the notation, bar number one, there's a rhythm pattern there, which is quarter, 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 
triple it quarter 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 triple it one two three four and a one two three tuck it so that's bar number one so with b flat major and with d major when you encounter bar one you do one two three triple it one and what are we going to do in bar number two bar number two i have designed it to be pretty interesting to give you two styles of arpeggios wherein you start with a block at beat one one two e and a three e and a four e and a one two e and a three e and a four e and a one two e and a three e and a four so it's essentially semi quaver fillers okay two three four that's your bar two two three four that's your bar two so if you compare bar one and bar two again one two three four oh oh one two oh 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 three e e e four oh 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 one bar one two three triple it ta tak de mi tak junu tak de mi ta 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 tak it ta dhum tak de mi tak de mi tak junu ta k ta tak it ta dhum tak de mi tak de mi tak junu ta so that's the rhythm pattern for this lesson and we are going to try and play this over b flat now the first obvious challenge you're going to face if you play block chords over the faster stuff the triplet variation and the semi quaver variation is going to end up being ta 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 tak it ta tak de mi tak de mi tak de mi ta as you can see it a is pretty tough for me to block it so fast and it's also rather annoying to listen to when you have chords colliding so fast with each other uh, so that's a great opportunity to break up the notes of the chord and do what we call as an arpeggio so instead of doing something like that we can break up the chord so with semi quavers and triplets i'm going to give you options so let's let's get that done so 1 2 let's just focus on bar 1 of b flat major 1 2 3 four, oh, oh. Four, oh, oh. now you could do two things at the four 1 2 3 4 oh, oh. you're going up the chord that is l m h or you can even do 1 2 3 1 h m l down the chord or up the chord down the chord so pum 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 is a good filler pum 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 and when you fill remember remember the fact that you have multiple inversions per chord right multiple meaning three not too much so b flat arpeggio or you can do b flat d f b flat arpeggio or else d f b flat first inversion la 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 coming down la da da la da da okay remember the arpeggio either goes h m l going down or l m h going up let's do that again b flat pam 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 full around with different inversions and different directions of the arpeggio So if you observe what I'm doing here I'm doing second inversion of B flat major and up the arpeggio on the triplet phrasing we call these as eighth note triplets one two because they divide a quarter note or a pulse note by 3 okay to keep things a bit interesting you can also go on the blocks you can in play it not just with the same inversion if you want to challenge yourself further you can go root first second arpeggio you can go all the way up you've accessed a fair amount of the keyboard root first second inversion arpeggio and then just come back down doesn't matter which inversion you start from you can even start from the second inversion you know arpeggio 
up the arpeggio pam pam te do 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 it organically do it however you want really ultimately the goal is to practice inversions as well as that triplet filler let's do it a little bit to speed okay it looks like we are ready to journey towards the next chord that's d major so b flat major d major d major and b flat sound very nice together they have that d in common so it makes it very interesting at the same time usable when i say interesting you you they are not part of any major scale or minor scale you right you get these very interesting scales you can build using those two chords but uh, mo more importantly they share a common bond which is d so you can definitely compose some interesting chord progressions so d major i'm going to repeat the same triplet activity or rather three blocks and then a triplet block 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 triplet so let's now toggle between b flat major and d major b flat major triplet d major ba triplet b flat major triplet d major triplet b flat major triplet d major mind you both the chords are now for one bar long our original goal was to play them for two bars so now what do we do in the second bar we practiced that earlier by clapping i counted that for you and just a quick word before we get into the second bar when you're counting triplets it's nice to divide the beat by 3 obviously and say 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and or as we sometimes say in india with konakol uh, terminology takit 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 if we divide by 4 as is the case for bar number 2 in this exercise you divide by 4 and you say 1 e and 2 e and 3 so the speed of the beat or the rate of the pulse will remain exactly the same it's just what you're doing inside the pulse so 1 e and 2 e and 3 e and you can also say it in the indian uh, terms could be tak dimi tak dimi tak junu tak dimi tak dimi tak dimi tak junu sounds a lot better with different syllables per subbeat you feel each subbeat independently then tak it tak it tak it that's triple it okay now coming to bar 2 where we do block arpeggio 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 okay so let me walk you through that first without any shifting i'll do the block arpeggio 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 block arpeggio arpeggio now it's a four note grouping but i can also choose to do a three note grouping as i'm going to show you so 1 2 3 4 and also counted as 1 2 e and 3 e and 4 e and 1 2 e and 3 e and 4 e and 1 2 e and 3 e and 4 e and 1 i'm doing it for both the chords depending on which inversion you're at and another thing to note with the group of 4 we have to add an extra note into the chord so the extra note is not a new note really it's just an octave of the lowest note so b flat d f b flat or if i'm playing d major like this a d f sharp i'll play the a on top so block arpeggio 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 block arpeggio 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 block but the arpeggio is in groups of four notes right just to make the accent on the beat or on the down beat meaning which it's on the one accent t 4 so the hit points or the strong beats are projected as 2 3 and 4 however i can even do groups of 3 while i'm playing this 1 2 3 4 so that's 3 uh, semi quavers in groups so if you do one beat is already taken up so let's do a little bit of uh, junior school maths if you take 4 by 4 in 16th notes that would be 16 beats 16 opportunities to place something into 
Now the first beat, one e and a four is already gone because that has that crotchet has engulfed a beat. So one beat is gone. So that you're left with sixteen minus four, twelve subdivisions. Twelve sixteenth notes are remaining. What do we do with the twelve? You can do three groups of four, as I just showed you. Two, three, four. That's three groups of four semiquavers. Or else you can do flip that around. Four groups of three. If you do three groups of four, three three fours are twelve. Four groups of three, four threes are twelve. So it still adds up to the same. But when you do three groups of four, the accent pattern or the accent phrasing is very normal. It's very down on the beat. You know, two, two, three. It's going exactly with your head. But when you do four groups of three, which still equals to those twelve subdivisions, you get a very accented or a very syncopated sound. One. If you observe my the way my head is moving, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. It's pretty tricky to count it as you play. I'd encourage you to do that maybe a bit later, but for now, at least move your head. Three, four, change. Two, three, four, change. Two, three, four. Sometimes we tend to get confused by these groups of three and call them as triplets. Uh, you you should not call them triplets because they are still semiquavers, just semiquavers grouped in threes. So the Overall division of the beat, it's being divided into four units. So, for example, if the beat value was one second or sixty beats per minute, then every semiquaver would be every quarter of a second or two hundred and fifty milliseconds. So one, two, three, four. That's groups of four. One, two, three, four. Lot more syncopated. So let's just do B flat and D with that uh, syncopated feel in the second. Bar, one, two, three. That's normal. One, sink. Ah, tum, ah, d. Ah, tum, tum, tum. Four groups of three. Tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tum. You can even say tuck it, tuck it to give you that nice phrasing. Tum, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tum. Tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tum. Tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tum. Tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, dum, tuck it. And now the fun begins because the arpeggio, like we saw for the triplets, you can do it with any inversion. And now what we can do is because the tables have turned in the sense there's only one block, one. So you play the block with any which inversion. So just hit B flat, and then you climb in groups of three or in groups of four. But you need to climb, or you could climb, if you can. One, two, three, four. You can climb with different inversions. So if I start with maybe the second inversion of B flat, one, two, three, four, D, maybe down, back. Takadimi takajunuta, takadimi takadimi takadimi. So that's groups of three, a four, right? Which makes it not so syncopated. If I do groups of three, tuck it, 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 tuck it. Feel free to start with maybe B flat in another inversion. In this case, well, I did second. Now I'll do root. Pum 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 pum. D major could change accordingly, or I could start B flat maybe, like here with its first inversion. You get the idea. When you're doing groups of three, you can keep jumping your inversions. Okay. Again, like I said, it feels like triplets, but they are not. In fact, I've done 
a, a dedicated YouTube lesson which is literally titled Triplets or Not. So uh, we leave that in the description where things you thought were triplets are actually not triplets. So it may be an interesting lesson to watch after this one. So we have two bars of data now. We have uh, the block, 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 triplet block, arpeggio, 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 then you change the chord. So I feel that this is making the journey of B flat or the, the act of playing B flat over two bars, which can be very boring and annoying sometimes, a lot more interesting. And the song also could have its own signature based on what you're doing right now. The People might even remember the song based on the style of playing the chords that you're doing now. Okay, so let's put that together and remember the second bar, those uh, 12 semi-quavers, we can group them as four or we can group them as three. So I'm just going to do that together and, and walk you through and then let's do it slowly. So B flat, block, triple it, still B flat, semi-quaver, semi-quaver, but descending semi-quaver. D major, triple it, block, semi-quaver, 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 but that was semi-quavers in groups of three, right? Takita, 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 dum, dum, three, triple it, dum, takadimi, takajuno, takadimi, ta, ka, ta, takita, ta, takita, takita, dum, takita, dum. of four <laughs> groups of three takita 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 okay now you might find our notation and my handwritten notes useful for this lesson so do consider getting a copy on our patreon page and not only for this video most of my lessons will be supplemented with notation handwritten notes or both MIDI is also included if you use MIDI software or a MIDI player. Now, before I wind up the lesson, I wanted to make these chords slightly more colorful, even though I planned initially not to do it. And I wanted to do another video exclusively on the coloring part of these chords. That's another thing you can do, by the way. But let me just give you a taste of it before we pack up. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell because... Part 2, Part 3, I don't know how many parts we are going to do with this concept of what to do in between or during a single, a singular chord. How to make that one chord interesting. Rhythmically is what we've seen uh, in this video. We would also love to do something melodic, something with a passing bass line, uh, something harmonically interesting. So let's check that out in the future videos. Now, if you take the B-flat major, a small amount of spice which you can add to the chord could be a an add to, which is the C. Another element of spice could be, you can add an add four. You can also add another element of spice which is... Right, which is the Bohemian Rhapsody chord that's an add 6 also called as a major 6th you can also do an add 7 B flat major 7 and that 7th could be either major 7th or a dominant 7th okay so we have a B flat major and what you can now do with the same rhythm pattern So check that out. I did a groups of three, but I did it with that add nine extension, which is B flat major with a C. So I can even do groups of four. D major filler. So I'm doing even D add 9. D major. Triple it bang. So 
these were all just add nines, but you can play around or add two, as you could also call. You can also play around with maybe a an add four. So, da, ta, da, 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 That sound. And for D, you can add a nice Lydian, which could be a sharp four. Right? Or stuff like that. So you can pick this one note and uh, do watch my video on specifically add chords and extensions, how to form it theoretically and how to use it. I've given some arpeggios as well. So you can kind of play that arpeggio line with these add voicings and it sounds beautiful even on minor. In this lesson we haven't done minor but you, the add extensions sound great on minor. They sound good on major as well but Anyway, so you can extend, you can add a 2, you can add a 4, you can add a 6 and you can add a 7. That's a B flat major 7. So I'm adding a nice D dominant 7, so it's a good combination, you know, B flat major 7th. And then that goes to the D dominant 7. Kind of makes those chords more obvious for your ear to digest. Right guys, so hope you found the lesson useful. All the best practicing. And if you'd like to learn music in a more structured way, you can always consider heading over to nathanielschool.com, filling up a form and choosing a course that suits you, either as a beginner uh, we have a foundation program uh, or as an intermediate learner and we teach a bunch of instruments, piano, guitar and vocals to name a few. Cheers and catch you in the next one.